helping you live an ordinary life in an extraordinary way. This is Your Health with Dr. Burgundy Collins. Hey, welcome to the show. I am Dr. Burgundy Collins. I am a licensed chiropractor in the state of Virginia and I practice in Arlington, Virginia. And I'm so excited that you all have decided to join me on today's show because on today's show, I have a very special guest. Today, we're speaking with Omari Gray. He is the fitness director and owner of The Body Right, which is a group training facility in Sterling, Virginia, in which members get structured programs, accountability, motivation, and camaraderie. Today, he's going to talk to us about a bunch of good stuff um, regarding exercise and fitness and getting sexy and all that great stuff. So, Omari, thank you for joining us on today's show. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Burgundy. We go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go back. It's we a pleasure to re- reconnect with you. Yes, it's, it's definitely a pleasure. I'm glad to see how successful you have become and how uh, much you're giving back by helping people um, get in their lives back together physically and mentally and emotionally. That's great. Tell us a little bit about what you do, you guys you. do over there at The Body's Right. And what does that name even mean? The Body's Rights come from that I opened up when I was living overseas in Amman, Jordan. It gave me the inspiration to start the body's rights because I was living in a country that fitness was not a part of the culture. I was training a lot of people that um, had just started training for the first time. And it was it was really a need, though, in these countries, uh, in this particular country, and I decided to have a small studio open there. So after starting the body's rights and then coming back to America three years ago, I said I want to continue doing that because for federal tradition, the, the name itself in which um, it said that we give our, you know, our family its rights, we should give our neighbors their rights, and we should give our body its rights. So you know, everyone pretty much is doing what they need to do with their family, their work, their community in many cases doing everything, giving everyone their rights, but neglecting their bodies, mm, right? This right. is the one thing which people take uh, don't take as serious. Um, and because we don't really have the, or many people don't, don't really um, take it serious, they don't reach out for the, for the resources. They don't seek the resources to get them to, um, to live the kind of lifestyle that they need to live, um, a healthy lifestyle, because our, our lifestyles are all out of whack something that I think we'll, we'll get into as well, but it comes from that. It comes from really taking your body serious, giving your body its rights, and to do that, uh, I decided to open up a studio, and the studio is group personal training. People, they train in groups. People will uh, get one-on-one personal training if they want to. I, I provide nutritional uh, consultation. I give full evaluations. Um body composition, um, uh, evaluations, uh, and then we do just a lot of just coaching and mentoring for people that, that really just need to make lifestyle change. I mean, that's really what we're about is people not coming for a 30-day, you know, makeover or, a, you know, a 60-day lifestyle change or something. No, it's a, it's a life lifestyle change. So you get a six-month, 12-month package, you're coming for the whole year. You're not coming for one month. So that's part of, that's part of you know, where I'm stuck doing now, but I'd like to get into some youth training uh, because kids need it now. Yeah, um, they do. Yeah. You, know, you look at some of the curriculums, the PE curriculums, the PE curriculums consist of throwing a ball out, because uh, I've been a teacher for 13 years as well, uh, mm-hmm. so I understand you know, what happens in PE. They throw a ball out, kids play, there might be some testing going on you know, in April, May, or June, but that's the, that's the extent. <laughs> yeah. So we, I really want to do some youth training as well. Um, and, uh, and that's the TBR Academy that I like to get going to. Nice. So you have some great things going on at TBR. I love the concept. Um, just reinforcing the fact that we should, our body does have a right to be healthy and vital and we should do whatever we can do to ensure that. That's great. I love that. That's excellent. So Omari, we were talking a little bit earlier, um, just about, exercise and fitness and getting older and everything and you are telling me um that 40 is now the new 20 and we're both approaching 40 not gonna say our ages but tell me and tell our audience how 40 is the new 20. okay uh well just personally now i, I can just start there um you know i'm uh 
I'm going to be 37 in a month from now. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting to 40 because I want to be better at 40 than I was at 20. So at 20, you know, I, I, I was a scholarship as a basketball athlete in college. And, you know, I, I think that I, I reached a you know, certain level of fitness. However, I suffered from shin splints. I suffered from a lot of, uh, you know, things in my own body, um, like uh, tendonitis. Um, you know, I, I had to take the ice bath, like, every day after practice sometimes. Mm. And, and I started to do a lot of uh, different um, types of training modalities, such as uh, mobility training, um, different types of yoga. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of weight training as well. So that that now has kind of balanced, and I don't have shin splints anymore. I still play basketball. I can still jump high. I mean, I'm I'm working on increasing my vertical jump now. So so I mean, that's that's just me personally. But just looking at you know, just for most people, we have to look at the 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 lifestyles that we're living now. Technology and everything else we have grown owns to. Uh, to have in our country should be giving us the freedom to live a certain lifestyle or to reduce stress, but it's actually the opposite. So, I mean, I think there are people out here and others are living this, this, uh, this mantra, if you will, of, uh, 40 being the new 20 by eating healthier food. My client, for example, he just sent me a picture of a, a cliff bar mm-hmm. and he said, Omari, 20 grams of protein. I said, okay, great. 20 grams of protein. How much sugar is in it? You look at the label. It said 30 grams of sugar. Now, do you know how much 30 grams of sugar is, Burgundy? That's a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Especially for a little clip bar. It's a lot of sugar, right? (laughs) A little bar, yeah. Now, 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 honestly, most, but in a bar. So, So, but on top of that, they divided it up. So, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because we're not eating like we should. When you put, uh, a certain amount of sugar in your diet, uh, more prone to diabetes. Yep. It's um it's also uh shortening your life uh, because yep. uh, of, of just like just internally uh what, what it's, it's also making you more more prone to um to get diseases or yep. sicknesses. Your immune system is weakening. Yep. It's doing a whole lot. So so just take that out of one's diet. Now there's no difference between if you really live a lifestyle which you should be living. There's no difference between you at 40 and you at 20. The only difference is yes. now you're a lot more older, you're yeah. a lot wiser, you know what I'm saying? You're a lot more experienced, right? So it's actually positive. I mean, but physically, there should be no a, a, a small amount of difference because at the end of the day, you know, you, you're, you're not going to have the same cartilage in your knee, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's that's maybe going away a little bit. But uh, and, and then also your, your um, you know, the way you recover, uh, from certain workouts or from any kind of mental activity, that's going to take a little bit longer, so you might just have to take a little bit more care. You see the difference? Mm-hmm. When you're 20 years old, you can smash your body. You can eat whatever you want. You sure can. <laughs> wake up in the morning, you know, after getting three hours of sleep. That'd be you good. Know, you, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and done whatever that night before and get up and go to track practice, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or get up and go to basketball practice. But when you're when you're 37 or Ooh. close to, or, or even 40, nah, you can take more care. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I need so, eight so hours. Solid. But, yeah, I mean you got to be careful now with your body, but you're no different than than when you were 20. You can get in the same shape physically, but now you just got to watch out for these these um these signals. You know, your body is always like, sending you signals. So, so I mean that I think that is why I'd like to preach this mantra of. 40 is the new 20 because, you know, people kind of get this idea that, you know, I could do the same thing at 20 as I did at 40. Well, you, you can do the same thing, but you just got to take more take care, care of in yourself. Yeah. And that's the problem is that people are not taking the care uh, that they're needing to to become that thing. I think that's really oh, cool that because you kind of like flipped it. Because when I heard you say 40 is the new 20, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, 40 is the new, like, 20 so I can still wild out. And just do whatever I want to do because, hey, I'm still, you know, in a 20 year old mind state. But actually, what you're saying is that we can have the same physicality and mobility and health at 40 if we take care of ourselves. Yes. You know, you know, as if we were, exactly. you know, not exactly. still 20, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Everything. That brought back to the memory some long, you know? wild yeah. nights and waking up early the next day. <laughs> so you mentioned sugar. Let's go back uh, to sugar. Um, Why do you think people are so addicted to sugar? I can tell you that, you know, a long time ago, there was, there was, there was no sugar inside of bread. Right? Um, mm-hmm. you, you didn't make bread with sugar. But when you look at bread now, the bread has some form of sugar in it, which comes disguised as different things. You know, cane sugar and, you know, uh, high fructose corn syrup, which is, we have, we have many forms of sugar, right? And when you look at the label, if you see any form of sugar in the, in the first three ingredients, it is something that, that is that you shouldn't really be eating, be minimizing as possible. So then when you look at that, people are eating these uh, whatever packaged items uh, that that have high contents of sugar. So at the end of the day, someone doesn't even know it, but they're getting addicted to sugar. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's only because of what they're eating. And, you know, like, like my client, for example, coming to me and saying, oh, I had three Cliff Bars yesterday, Omari. <laughs> like three cliff bars? What are you eating three cliff bars for in, in one day? So it's kind of like, you know, we think that we're doing good things. Like when you look at trail mix, right? Mm-hmm. Look at trail mix. And they throw M and M's in there. Yeah, M and M's. You just ruined it. Yep. Look at salad, right? Look go to a go to a uh, a grocery store and look at the salad bar. That salad dressing, packed with sugar. The only the only kind of salad dressing you should be getting is uh, is a vinaigrette. Olive oil, you know that that's it. But other than that, when you look at any of those other type of salads dressings, they're packed with sugar. It's that we have a culture. The food industry is not out to make us healthy. No, it's not. It's that's for profit. Let's put it plainly, right? So because of that, you're not living in a country where where companies are food conscious. They're capital conscious. Yeah. They're profit conscious, right? And that's what they're in business for. So then, when you go to the grocery store, we have to become peripheral shoppers, which means that. You have to shop on the outside yep. of the grocery store. Exactly. You can't go down shop. the house, right? Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. And and that's the problem is that people are not being becoming peripheral shoppers. They're going down the aisles and those are the things that's getting them addicted to sugar. Yeah. And let's let's explain what peripheral shopping is for those who don't know. Peripheral shopping is when you're in the shopping um like the grocery store. You wanna stay um on the outside of the store, like the veggies, um the fresh produce, those yeah. are the types of things you want to pick up because like Omari was just saying, as you go down the aisles, you have more of those processed foods, foods that have um, been sitting there. They have all types of chemicals so that they can stay fresh um, and they're processed. So right. the foods are not fresh. So, and like Omari said, they're the ones that are packed with sugar and the ones that will lead you to being um, further addicted to the sensation and taste of that sugar and you're being more prone to things like obesity and type 2 diabetes. Great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. by you working at the gym and um, being a fitness expert, if someone wanted to kind of make sh- make this change and really approach their life as 40, um, being the new 20, how can they make that lifestyle change? How can they stop having the sugar? How can they get back in the gym on a regular basis and stick to those changes? All right. So, so there's there's three there's three answers for that. Number one, which is the most important, your company. So the people that you spend your time with could be, number one, sapping your energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Could be, uh, could be, uh, really, um, uh, creating more anxiety and, 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 uh, and pulling you down. Uh, but, but also the people you're around should be health conscious. They should be fitness conscious. And if they're not, then you need to recruit some people or you need to, you know, have some people that, you know, that are around you. That, that have this type of health and fitness culture in, in mind because that's the only way you're going to really embody it as a lifestyle. So, so that's kind of why we're, we're, we're kind of developing this camaraderie, this community. And there's, there's, there's many different environments you can get into in Northern Virginia or anywhere, right? So mm-hmm. CrossFit, for example, has developed some kind of community culture. Other fitness studios. So, so my advice for people is, to find a find a community culture that you can be a part of, mm-hmm. or give a phone call to that family member or that friend that you know is health conscious and fitness conscious, and say, look, can I work out with you? And you know, can we train together? Can we go to the gym together? Um, because you know that that social factor is is going to be um, quite important in sustaining a lifestyle change. Okay. The second way to to really uh, have a lifestyle change is to have a goal 
to be goal set oriented, just like anything in life. Not to say that you got to put this detailed smart goal together, right? But on a goal like 60 days from now, you know, I want to have 3% less body fat. I want to have three inches off of my waist. You know, I want to be able to run an 8K. So, I mean, when you look around the fitness industry, a lot of gyms are, you know, catering to obstacle course races, health monitor and Spartan race, mm-hmm. um, and uh, many, many different races, specifically in this area that we live in, in the DMV. So, so obstacle race courses are great in the gym right now. Um, they cater, many gyms cater to them because it's goal oriented. People have said you have to set a goal and then you have to continue to make new goals. It could be a 30 day goal, 60 day goal, 90 day goal. Um, but goal setting should, um, should always be in the short term as mm-hmm. well as, as in the long term. Um, and then also people should write it down and just make sure that they take it serious. Um, taking it serious is actually putting it to pencil and paper. So, so that would probably be the second way to really maintain a lifestyle change. And then the third thing, which um, is also very, very key. I'm sorry. Let me let me just go back real quick to the uh, the idea of friends because we're living in a social media world. Yep. Um, I think a lot of what you're looking at on social media sites should also be health and fitness oriented material. I agree. Because that also has to be engaged. You know, that, that helps you to even understand kind of, you know, what's going on um, and, and, and really to stay stay uh, on top of what's new in health and fitness because it's, it's such an, an evolving industry. So now goal setting, we went over. And the third uh, thing, which is um, maybe not as important as number one or two, is to really make sure that you have the, the mindset. Uh, number one and two really helps to set the mindset. But I, I would say even more specifically, number three is to really have a mindset that I can do it. That, that, you know, I can make a lifestyle change and have what I like to call a, a growth mindset. And that comes from Dr. Carol Dweck. Dr. Carol Dweck is a um, psychologist from Stanford University, and she, she developed having a growth mindset. And I feel that that's a hindrance for most people to actually take a lifestyle, get a lifestyle change. And what the growth mindset is, is you look at everything that happens in your life mm-hmm. as a learning lesson. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to the gym, you, you, like you, you're going to go to the gym, and you're going to go fail. And I tell my clients that all the time. So when you when it happens, especially if you, you haven't been doing it, you know, like you know, most people haven't done collegiate sports and went semi, you know, professional, did professional sports and played all in high school and were really. If you're not that kid, then that means that your neuromuscular system is not developed yep. um, that well, right? right. And, and and then your your cardiovascular system is really not developed either. Right. But for some people that maybe were athletes in high school and in college, it's going to be a lot easier for them to get in shape because muscle has memory, so they're going to probably get like 30, 60 days, right? So, right. boom, they're, they're back in shape. They're back in their element. But what about people that didn't have that background? It'll take them longer. You know, it's going to take longer. Say, you know what, this is challenging, and I'm going to learn from this challenge. And then on top of that, and having the growth mindset, what Dr. Carl Dweck said is, is that, you should get inspired from other people's successes. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, not feel intimidated. You know, when you see, you know, this woman who's the same age as you, and, and you know, she's in great shape, and she has a lot going for herself, or, or, or whatever we consider that to be, as opposed to taking being threatened by that, you get inspired by that. That's all a part of the the growth mindset to kind of say that you can do that, right? Yeah. Um. So I, I think that is very important for people to um, to have that growth mindset. Now, the opposite of the growth mindset is the fixed mindset. And the fixed mindset is basically saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to, to get in shape. Um, I haven't done it. You know, I, I have a, a history of diabetes in my family and high cholesterol. Um, so I'm just going to probably be just like them. And, and, you, and, you're, and you're fixed in your mindset. And, and, and because of that, you can't ever grow in this way. So people have to realize that it's going to be challenging. You can't be scared of failure. you got to learn from it and, and just expect it. So, I mean, number one and two can easily happen if you have that growth mindset. So, um, so yeah, I hope that answers the, the question of being able to make a lifestyle change. Yeah, that would be a great answer. Um, you're basically saying people need to, one, find their tribe, um, find people who they can um, 
you know, surround themselves with who are also fitness and health conscious, um, also have specific goals that are, you know, short and attainable. And instead of having that fixed mindset, have a growth mindset so they could be, you know, continue to grow and not, you know, fall back or be discouraged when they have failures. Those are great, great um, ways to help a person make a lifestyle change and stick to it. I love it. Um, before we let you go, we run out of time. I would like to go a little bit into um, once you're in the gym, um, especially for women. Um, a lot of women I've learned um, since I've begun working out again in the gym is that a lot of women are afraid to kind of use weights. They think they're going to bulk up and look like a dude. I'm a big proponent of using weights to exercise. I do yoga and I run, but I also like to um, work right, out weights. Right. Can you kind of break that down or kind of clear the air for women who kind of think that using weights is somehow going to make them manly looking? Okay, so so first of all, um, uh, you know, lifting weights can bulk you up, say that it can't, but it, it's only going to happen through hypertrophy. And hypertrophy is when you have a particular muscle um, that is uh, maybe isolated, um, or e- maybe even a couple of muscles, you know, compound muscles that are isolated, and and the the muscle is shocked. And usually, to to really shock the muscle, it's going to have to be overloaded. So, I mean, women should not be thinking about using heavy weights. You know, um, when you're using heavy weights, that could create hypertrophy and then you can bulk up. But what I'm advocating, though, is that they start off using very light weights and more importantly, doing bodyweight exercises. So, so you find, you know, right now in most gyms that high intensity interval training, which mm-hmm. is one training modality, um, as well as classes, these are, these are really, um, popular right now. And the reason why is because it's very effective. Well, it's, it's very effective because when you take a, uh, um, strength training, strength training is anaerobic as opposed to aerobic. Zumba, for example, is very aerobic mm-hmm. or thing which is just working a cardiovascular system. But when you take something which is anaerobic, which is without oxygen and really focusing on, you know, um, your, your muscles, that's more effective in burning fat. So people need to understand that if your goal is to burn fat, which is what most people want to do, the most effective way to burn fat is strength training. Oh. And what better strength training than to use your own body weight? So, so this is this is this is why people need to do it because it's the most effective for what you want to do. All right. So you so when you when you look at you know cardiovascular exercises, you know jogging or again Zumba or you know any kind of dance class or something like that, those are great. And we're not going to take away from them. But if you want to hit your goals um, faster, you need to focus on strength training. And that should be at least three, two to three times per week. All right? And the Zumba and all those other things are great because they supplement, you know, what you're doing in the gym. But I feel the, the focus of any program should be the quality of the strength training. Um, and, and, and not only for that, also for the reason of posture. Um, you know, people, because of a lack of muscles within their, uh, their, their, their back and their, their abs and their oblique and then their glutes, and which is kind of helping to keep their, their trunk up and to keep mm-hmm. their, their posture correct. Um, you know, many times it's lacking. Yeah, so you I can see be, that every you know, day. You can run very, very good outside, but, but if you don't have a good, good foundation in, in your, there's a problem. You can get hurt a lot easier. You, you're preventing injury by having a stronger foundation. We're, we're, we're talking about developing lean muscle. So everyone, I think, wants to have lean muscle. Mm-hmm. And what is lean muscle? Lean muscle is doing exercises that are very lightweight and doing bodyweight exercises. Wow, I actually learned something. I, all this time I thought that you burn more weight, basically, the more you sweat. So if you're, you're like doing a Zumba, running a treadmill, no. running outside, you're burning more weight. I didn't really know that. Strengthening exercises was... Were- was really burning weight. We're burning fat. Sweat in itself is not an indication that you're working hard. Shut up. <laughs> that they will sweat after five minutes. I have some clients that won't sweat until 20 minutes, but it doesn't. It's not an indication of how how hard they're training. All right, but uh, because you know we all have sweat glands, uh, yeah. our sweat mm-hmm. glands differ. You know, and and that's not something which is the same in every person. Um, but but just just to add to that. Your metabolism is speed up a lot faster when you're doing strength training, you know, and, and it's intensity interval training, 
which is kind of a, a training modality that people are going through right now, yeah. in which you train really fast, whether it's strength training or, or some form of training for a short amount of time, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you take a, a break for a short amount of time, yeah, like and you second. continue that <laughs> over a span of time. Yeah. So, like, interval training is really popular right now, and it's really effective, and you can do it in your home. Yeah, I'm big on right? I'm big um, on high-intensity so, training. I love it. Because it's short, it gets right to the point, you kill yourself for about a good half hour, and then you're done. I love it. I think it's awesome. If people have to work, go to that. Most of that. Like, you, if you're if you if you're training for 30 minutes, get a really good workout, you have to build that type of capacity. You're not going to just get in the gym. Or, or, you know, start this training immediately and think that you can, you know, do it as a fact for someone else. Like, you might burn 300 calories in 30 minutes while someone else that's training a lot harder might burn 750 to 800 calories. So it takes the effort and you have to be willing to fail and you got to be willing to, to, to know that it's going to be a journey. So people have to first put their self in the mindset that, okay, this is a journey. I'm, re I'm making this lifestyle change. I'm putting these people in my in my path so that they make this journey a lot easier, and I'm going for it. Well, sounds good, Omari. Um, we run out of time. You've given us so much to to think about. I personally have learned um during this conversation, so I thank you for that. Very appreciative um for you being on today's uh -huh. show. Um, can you tell people where they can find you? Um, your location, phone number, website, anything you want to share before you go? Well, yeah, they can they can go to the website. Um, it's www thebodiesright.com uh, uh, more information about our studio it's in Sterling, Virginia and uh, we're also going to be offering some online digital products different programs because we don't want the location to stop people from being able to take advantage of some of our, our services so we are going to be offering some online digital products so um, you know they can go to the website and you know put their email addresses on on the site and be updated with uh, some information that we have. Yep, and Amari is actually going to provide some of that digital information on our website here at um, drburgundy.com. So uh, be sure to go Perfect. to the website right. and get some good information and also um, more info on how you can train, you know, with Omari and his staff over there at The Body's Right. Thank you so much, Omari, for um, joining us on this episode of This Is Your Health. Again, I learned so much. And I'm sure the listening audience learned as well. I got to bring you back, man. You know so much stuff. We could have just kept on talking. So I'm going to have to have you back on the show. Is that okay? No doubt. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all for listening. We will chat with you next time on This Is Your Health. Um, be sure to post questions on Twitter and feedback that you would like me to cover um, on a particular podcast or on uh, during one of the blogs. Don't forget, you can also find This Is Your Health on Stitcher. And we are also on Blog Loving. Oh, both of those sh sites show us lots of love, make comments so that we can be included in their top rankings. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. And we'll chat with you later. This is Dr. Burgundy.